Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week we've got trainers that aren't trainers, a thousand pound rear derailleur cage, a thermometer, and a mountain bike. Oh, and uh, your upgrades in the bike vault. Plus, our main talking point, can technology overcome aging? Can it? I hope so. First up, let's take a look at last week's poll where we asked how long do tubular tyres have left? Um, I actually voted that they're going to be here forever. However, 38% of viewers think that there'll be two years till the pros aren't using them. So have they got two years left? I would say. That's the tubular tyre extinction clock. Oh. Well, I guess we should keep an eye on it. Mm. Right then, on to our main talking point. Can bike tech beat the aging process? Can constant innovation into the equipment we use nullify the rate of physical decline we experience as we get older? And the first thing to point out is that yes, if improved technology is going to help you ride faster when you're older, a younger person with that technology would be still faster still. But we're not focused on raising the kids, are we? We're focusing on our own performances. Exactly. Now, but also there's an argument that as you get older, you have more disposable income to buy fancy yeah. bike tech as yeah. well. Bonus, but um, first let's look at the science. So here is a study that was published in the Journal of Sports Science Medicine, and it looked at the rate of physical decline in cyclists across one minute maximal efforts. I should point out it was only males in this study, and mm. it wasn't females, so it's likely to be slightly different for women. However, what it found was that on average, the cyclists peaked at 30, yeah, and then after 30, there was decline. But the decline wasn't as bad as you might think. It's only 2.4 watts over a one minute effort less per year. Well, that's not so uh, every year. Almost a linear trend yeah. of decline until they reach 60. In your sixth decade, uh, the decline uh, starts to accelerate. So um, with that thinking, I'm actually in my first year of decline. Mm. So yeah. only 2.4 watts only less. Only 2.4 watts less. Um, that's I, quite good. I think it might be a lot more than that seeing as I've now retired from professional racing. <laughs> Hopefully it's only 2.4 yeah. watts. Mm. So this is a list of the UK 10 mile time trial record over okay. the last years. And you can see the progression of the record. Oh, um, oh hold on, before you go actually. Yeah. Um, 1981, is that Dan Lloyd? Although they've mistakenly put Manchester Wheelers instead of Cervelo Test Team. Yeah, but before, uh, well, just to be clear, D Lloyd in 1981 isn't Dan, oh. uh, it's Dave. Oh. Um, is that his brother? No. no. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, but you can see on this list, we've got Sean Yates at the bottom uh, in 1979. He did it in 20 minutes, seven seconds. And then right at the top, Martin Beer Blocky. And we also, you know, so who's who, isn't it? You've got Alex Dowsett in there, Bradley Wiggins, Graham O'Brien. Uh, but the interesting thing for me is that if you, you can, you can roughly assume on here that all these riders were, were top of their game. They were all, you know, putting out around 400. Yeah, at, at their time, watts. they were like the yeah. best riders. Graham O'Brien would have been <clears throat> doing over 400 watts, yeah. and you know, Sean Yates as well, and you know, Alex Dowsett. But what you can therefore see is when you look at times that riders are doing now, at amateur times that they're, they're doing, a lot of riders, are, are comparatively, are putting out that sort of 1830 kind of Graham O'Brien, a 1993 time. Yeah, it's not uncommon to see sub-19s on fast courses, is it? No, it's no. not. But they're not doing it off Graham O'Brien watts. <laughs> they're doing it off much less. Um, and you can do the maths and, yeah, if you're sufficiently aerodynamic through technology and then improvements in rolling resistance, yes, you can do a time like that. Um, also, I find it quite interesting is that the, the, you know, as the times get slower, the, the, um, year that that record was set matches up with what we're saying about the advancements in technology. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's in chronological order for the, the time of the performance and the year it was done. It, they both match up. Yeah. Mm. So if we do a very quick unscientific calculation, I can estimate, look, using maths, that it would be possible to do a time comparable to Graham O'Brien's off about 320 watts. Yeah. If you had good conditions, a fast course, and all the latest tech. Yeah. So if we then say 25 years old, roughly that record, yeah, 80 watts less, 400 to 320, that works out at about 3.2 watts per year. Improvement in, improvement in technology. Improvement in tech. Okay, yeah. 
which is the lower estimate limit, which is 2.4 watts. It's beating that. So in this case, tech is beating that decline. Or even if we look to year. the slightly higher estimate, it at least nullifies that effect, yeah. doesn't it? You, you're offsetting it at least. Yeah. Yeah. Which and is interesting as well, because there are um, lots of amateur riders we see which are still equaling or, equaling or improving their times from time trial performances of what they've set previously. Despite getting older. Despite getting older. Yeah, still getting yeah. PBs. It, that's, it means that actually that it's possible that if Graham O'Brien trained and trained for 10 mile time trials, even though he set that, you know, in his youth, that yeah. record, he could probably equal or beat it now. Well, we've said he can, so he best. Throwing down the gauntlet, <laughs> Graham Obrey. <laughs> Dust off his bike. Yeah. Or Boardman as well, he could probably beat his PB. Yeah. He's not hit 60 yet, so, you know, he's... Oh, he's still, still on that steady decline. Still time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is down largely to tech improvements that you'll all be familiar with. More aerodynamic clothing, lower rolling tyres, better drivetrain efficiency. And although we are talking in the context of time trials, this applies to wall cycling. And the indoor, um, indoor training revolution has also helped people. They're now fitter than ever. They're just far more aware of structured training that can be done indoors, making yeah, them you better can than before. Do it more efficiently and yeah. get fitter off, off using the indoor platform. We've definitely seen that. I certainly have. I think, I think just, just uh, sort of improved tech and, and gadge in general as well. Just uh, What's gadge? Help. Gadge is my abbreviation for gadgets. Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. But yeah, there's lots of little things that. Um, you know, just might improve you a small amount each day, you know, and it's that classic aggregation of marginal gains. 1% better on one day, it's, it, it's not really anything, no. but then it's not perceptible. But added up over a large period of time, 1% better every day for a year, if it's compounded, should result in 37 percent better in Yeah, it makes big improvements when you look at it that way, doesn't it? Yeah, and you know, thing, little devices, things like, you know, a whoop strap, helping you improve your, your sleep. You know, I've got, I've been blowing Kelm with it well, but I think that's something that's helped me get better. And then, you know, you, you look at other things like fitness tracker apps, nutrition apps that help track your food better. I can't imagine Sean whole... Yates had his whoop on when he set his original no. time trial record. Oh, lots of tech like that, it just didn't yeah. exist, did it? Yeah, mm. but all these little things as well, they're all compounding and helping people improve. Better diets in general as well are a big mm. thing that I think are helping cyclists now. And a, a piece of wearable tech I think we'll see a lot more in the future is continuous blood glucose monitors. I think they're gonna be a big, big game changer. The thing is though, over the last 40 years, we have seen innovation and technology overcome that age-related decline. But do you think it can keep that up? What will the next 40 years be the same, or even the next 20 years? Can technology and innovation keep this same rate of progression? Oh, that's a big question, isn't it? Because, I mean, you think we might have just been living through a sort of golden age of, of bike innovation, yeah. um, and now the rate of innovation is not going to be as high. But then again, it might be even higher than what we've seen. I mean, let us know in the comments what you think about this. You know, will bike innovation still continue and allow us to be even faster in 20 years time than what we are now, or, or will, will it, it not? Will it yeah. Not, yeah. So the big question we want to know is through improved technology and, and science, are you faster now than you were 10 years ago? Are you? I hope so. Mm. Mm. It's time now for hot tech. And first up this week, we've got a brand new mountain bike from Villia. Because if you didn't know, I actually really like mountain biking and Ollie is actually pretty good too. Dropping in. Yeah. It's been a number of years now since we've seen Villia release a new mountain bike. And this is their all singing, all dancing, brand new, lightweight cross country race bike called the Urta SLR. Ooh, well, it's very nice. I mean, if you're a, a roadie, then uh, yeah. this is a, a mountain bike that's gonna, I think, appeal to you. Carbon frame, mm. integrated bar and stem. Roadies love those. Yeah. I love it. Uh, it's, anyway, it's got hydraulic disc brakes, DI2, uh, tubeless tires, uh, carbon wheels as well. That also, because um, it's a mountain bike, it's got 100 millimeters of progressive rear travel. That's a good thing for mountain biking, Ollie. And something that caught my eye, actually, is that all of the bearings in the rear rear triangle pivots are all the same size, which is Ooh. great for simple maintenance. Yes, mm. well designed, practical. Yeah, very good. How much did it weigh? Um, 1,700 and something carbon grams, I've forgotten. Well, that's light in it for mm. a mountain bike. <laughs> nice. Next up, we've got trainers that aren't trainers. A while back, we saw Adidas launch their new cycling shoe, and they've launched another new one called the Velo Samba. This is a popular 
casual shoe. However, this is obviously a cycling specific version. It's got a two bolt cleat fix underneath and it has a nylon insole to increase stiffness. Oh, pretty, pretty cool though. Pretty cool, yeah. Uh, interesting fact about the Adidas Samba. Mm -hmm. uh, actor. Shia LaBeouf, mm -hmm. he, he wore a pair of them in uh, the film Revenge of the Fallen, Transformers 2009. I like that film. Um, additional interesting fact, Oliver Bridgewood actually has a set on right now as we speak. Uh, not cycling ones, just normal. Oh no, not, these are gazelles. Oh, right. bloody hell, we'll cut that out. <laughs> Next up we have a thermometer, a core body temperature sensor. Now this is, well, I guess it's one of those little gadgets we're, we're talking about in the main talking point, it's sort of it one of the one percenters that adds up. But this device is able to measure a rider's core body temperature, um, which in the past we, it was possible, but it was a bit more tricky, it was a bit more invasive. They had to stick a thermometer up here. This is a smart little gadget that is used to monitor fatigue, help improve performance and reduce the risk of illness and injury, hopefully. And it can link up to a smartphone or a Wahoo or Garmin head unit to record that data. Um, because as we know, if your body overheats, your power output reduces quite drastically. And this is technology that has been adopted by a number of World Tour teams. Mm. I didn't know that actually, Alex, but uh, <laughs> thanks for telling me because yeah. I can add that to my big list of uh, excuses. Did you overheat at uh, five versus one? Yeah. Mm. It was, yeah, it was quite warm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, quick fire facts. Um, six day battery life, water resistant, weight 12 grams, and is 197 pounds and 95 pence. On to our final bit of hot tech this week, and we've got a $1,000 pulley cage system. We do. I mean, oversized pulley wheel systems, they're not a new thing. No. Uh, and in my mind, they are kind of like the ultimate piece of bike jewelry that you can hang off your pride and joy. Um, but a chap called Josh Ogle um, has come up with a new design. So this was in an article on Cycling Tips. But what he's done is he's created this incredible looking pulley wheel system that not only has oversized pulley wheels, but also oversized bearings oh, nice. as well. Yeah, I mean, good. it looks stunning. It's a really nice sort of object. Um, and the thinking behind it was that he's designed the system uh, with his engineering background around the bearing, which was a really high quality aftermarket ceramic affair. Yeah, full ceramic. So ceramic bearings and the race as well as ceramic. Yeah, yeah. it's proper cool. Um, but how many watts does it save? Ah, well, uh, uh, well, quite refreshingly, uh, Josh Ogle isn't making any claims as, yeah. to, as to wattage savings. Um, he says it probably saves a bit, uh, <laughs> although he hasn't tested it yet. Um, and actually, he, he postulates in, in, in the article that he thinks it might actually be slightly less efficient, I mean, to larger bearings being slightly less efficient than smaller ones. But he does say that the larger bearing is capable of, you know, there's, there's better, better, shift. Lo better longevity with a larger bearing. And also, he reckons it's stiffer, so you get better shifting performance. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. More hot tech next week. It's now time for snacks of every other week. Oh, I'm glad you're back, Ollie, because last week we didn't have any snacks. All oh, right. Um, have, well, have you, you gone not to the snacks? Have, I thought you were getting them. Sachin Katecha sent some Maltesers. Oh, we've you had eaten a, them? We've had a right mix up in communication here. Oh, Unbelievable. God. I'm down to like one bag of Guinness crisps now. Is it the final bag? Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to have those for lunch. Oh, um, hopefully, more snacks, not next week, the week after. Mm. We've had a shocker in snacks of every other week, but it's now time for screw riding upgrades by upgrades. Oh yeah, right, what did we have last week? I wasn't here. Oh yeah, you weren't, were you? You were away. Oh. Last week, um, we had Daniel Carno's Cube Stealth Bike Respray, which I have to apologise um, because I spotted that he mentioned it wasn't a respray. He'd actually wrapped the bike in vinyl wrap Ooh, all wrap. by himself. Um, so even more impressive, hats off to you. Um, mm -hmm. And he was up against Robin Merton 961's Gazelle Van 2 restoration. Um, and the votes are in. 57% went to Daniel Carno's Cube Stealth Bike Rewrap, not respray. Right, well, uh, watch out, Yanomize. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, Daniel Carmo's coming for you. And um, what will he win this week? Uh, bottle, GCM bottle. Yeah, mm. GCM bottle. Get in contact on Facebook, I'll send it out to you. Um, Who have we got this week? This week we have got Mark Holland 8 who says, after building his old cyclocross bike into a gravel bike and not wanting to use it for work, he decided to build a commuter bike. So we've got a 1992 Trek multi-track commuter converted to a modern steel gravel bike slash commuter for daily track slash road 30 mile round trip commute. <laughs> 
Well, catchy. What, Very uh, catchy. I mean, it looks, that looks great, doesn't it? Oh yeah, real old retro Trek, isn't it's it? It's done a great job of stripping the paint off there on that respray. That's one of the best things is prep for these respray um, upgrades, isn't yes. it? Yes, if Malon taught us anything, it's, it's, it's prepped a surface. Good preparation is key. Mm. It's not going to be plain sailing though, because uh, Sean M. Surd has uh, submitted an upgrade. And he's, well, he, he's, he's lost a, a lot of weight as well on this bike, which makes it even better. So he said he started at 225 pounds and he's down to 165 pounds, which is blooming great. Oh, uh, well, job. fair yeah, play well on that. Yeah. Um, he's upgraded himself, not just his bike. <laughs> double upgrade. Yeah, double upgrade. Um, and, and then he's he's got an, an old steel stallion and upgraded it into a gravel grinder. Um, and he said he's had a bit of help from his local bike shop, which is great. And he switched it to one by SRAM. Um, with an 1142 cassette and a 40 tooth chain ring. He's put on some uh, a new stem and seat post, uh, which it hopefully gives him a bit of compliance on the rough stuff. And he's added in some custom wheels and some 38 uh, millimeter tires for off-road. Look at that. Well, that's cool. That's cleaned up real nice. It is, hasn't it? Oh, super flared handlebars. Yeah, proper. Whoa. I mean, that's a proper, proper gravel bike now, isn't it? Yeah, that is. I like the canty brakes on the old bikes, but it's so easy to maintain them, isn't it? Oh yeah, God, you don't see those very often anymore, do you? No. Really I had, nice I had though, a bike like that. that was just like that, back in the day. Back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's not down to us, is it, Ollie? It is down to the viewers. So head over to the GCN app and vote on whose upgrade gets your vote. Time now for our favourite part of the show, the Bike Vault, where you submit images of your bikes and we judge them to be either nice or super nice. If they're super nice, Alex rings the bell and they get committed to the bike vault for eternity. You can uh, submit your bike using the GCN app and also vote on the ones that we feature in the show too. So without further ado. Neither of us have seen them this week, have we? No, um, Manon picked Manon them out. Manon has picked these out. So I'll start us off fire. with um, Joycey55 with their custom painted Tarmac SL7. Oh, very. Oh, why has he chopped the back wheel off? Oh, yeah. Cool uh, colour, though. Yeah, a little bit underexposed. I'd say it's super nice, though, isn't it? Yeah, nice. super nice. Uh, Jace Fandango is next with his uh, Andy Thompson from 1985. It's hidden in the long grass. The cranks are in the wrong position. Nice Peugeot water Just a bottle. Just nice for me. Saddle. Yeah, nice. Nice. Next is um, Rucci.f. Interesting. Trek Remonda SLR, 2019. Oh, it looks like it's about to fall over. Jaunty angle. Very nice. jaunty. Nice. nice. Oh, nice. sorry. No, nice. Uh, IRS 75 as uh, a specialised expert disc. Look at another spe Oh, I like that camo, that Arctic camo. Oh, I, I'm a fan of that. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. I think that, uh, Valve's like super nice. Oh, super nice. Good work. I like that. I like that camo. It's good. Don't that. dwell on it. Joe jo, jo, jo in Dublin. Has a spot mayhem one third. Oh, first. what on earth is this? We can't have two mountain bikes in we the put, tech we, show. We put a, it's our fault. We put a mountain bike in hot tech, oh. and now man on stitch the floodgates right have opened. Mm. Um, what do we think of it? Though it's we can't nice, judge isn't it. it. Um, it's yeah, nice. it's nice. Yeah, yeah, okay. Why, um, why is it like next to some kitchen units and underfloor? I mean, that's a nice sort of like under unit lighting that he's got there. Well, that is nice, yeah. yeah it's quite, I was considering saying that from a garage, but I got them underneath the worktop instead. And yeah. mm. um, that is our last submission for this week's Bike Vault. Um, interesting way to end. I quite like his, uh, his floor as well. It's like a sort of Jackson Pollock kind of fractal pattern. Mm. Anyway, well, yeah. Oh, what, I don't know, what just happened? That's unfortunately it for this week's GCN Tech Show, but if you're going to do one thing this weekend, head over to GCN Plus and check out some of the latest tech innovations and documentaries that we've got out. Yeah, if, if, there's some really good in-depth tech content on there. Uh, Steel is Real, which is a deep dive into Reynolds tubing. Also, building a superbike as well. And we've got a lot more in the pipeline, so... Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, See you later. Check it out. Bye.